Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how when you are adding video clips to your timeline, you don't have to add an entire source clip, but you can rather select part of the source material using in and out points and put whatever's between those in and out points onto the timeline rather than dragging an entire video clip. So that can be handy when you have really big clips, possibly with a lot of downtime where your camera was just recording and there's really nothing going on. So why bother editing that on the timeline when you can just go into the clip and select the portion that you actually want to use. So if we're on the edit page, one of the easy ways to just add a clip to the timeline is to just drag it down here to the timeline. But as you can see, when we do this by default, it's just pulling in the entire video clip. So the way that we can control what we add with in out points is to double click on the base video clip that we want to pull from. And that's going to be putting it up in this preview window. Let's actually use a different clip here just so that we can obviously tell the difference. And down here you have the timeline preview for that source clip. So when you find a part of the video that you actually want to pull from, let's say that we want to decide an end point here, you can hit I on the keyboard by default in order to set an end point. Now you know that you have your end point set because everything between the end point and the end or the end point and an out point that you've set is going to have a lighter color gray bar. So now if we want to select the end point for what we actually pull into the timeline, we just go further into the clip, find a good spot, let's say right about here, and we hit O on the keyboard. Now you can also clear your in out points by hitting Alt and X on the keyboard. So if you want to go back to pulling the entire clip in or you just want to reset your in out points, then you can do that. Also, if we take a look at the mark menu at the top, then we'll see more key bindings that we can use for controlling this kind of stuff. So as you can see here, you can also clear your in out points by using Alt I and Alt O to clear those individually rather than both at once. So let's go back to the clip and re add in those in out points. So I'll just do there and there. And now let's drag the clip into the timeline. So I'll put it right about here. Now, because these are two totally separate clips, we can't really tell if it has been trimmed on the sides initially. So one way to see that really obviously is going to be to click on the edge of the left and right and see if you get this green border. So this represents that there is actually video material before this point. And we can pull this over to the left all the way to the beginning of our source material. If we're instead in trim mode by hitting T on the keyboard, then when we adjust this, it's not gonna be overlapping the first clip, but rather it's going to be expanding this clip by pushing it to the right. So it works a little different if you're in selection or trim mode there. So the fact that we have that extra video information from the source shows that when we pulled the clip under the timeline that we weren't pulling the entire clip. So uh, same over here with the end, we set an out point. So we have this extra material to pull from in the source clip. So using this kind of trick is gonna be most useful when you're just looking for one specific clip from a longer video file. So you can just pick what you want from the source file, bring it into the timeline, rather than having to edit everything when it's on the timeline. You can just do that in advance and save yourself a step. So here's a couple extra tricks you can use with in and out points. So if you hit I and O on the main video timeline, then of course that's gonna set your in and out points and give you a range for a selection. So whenever you use in and out points, you can just think of it as a selection. So in that we are selecting this portion of the timeline, if we want to remove it because we're using in and out points, we could hit control X on the keyboard. And that's actually going to cut whatever's between the in and out points if that's set. However, if you have an entire clip selected like this and you hit control X, it's going to get rid of the entire clip. But with no selection, it's going to remove what's between the in and out point which is one reason that you'd want to probably regularly clear it with all X like that so that it doesn't get in the way in the future if you don't need it anymore. So another thing you can use in out points for is snapping. So the snapping tool easily allows you to move the timeline cursor to the edges between clips, but you can also use the in and out points as kind of a marker that you can snap the timeline cursor to. So if I take this cursor over here to where we have the end point, you can see that it easily snaps to here just as if we had a cut at the edge between two video clips. So here I make a cut and we can snap to it, but 
the same thing works with in out points without requiring you to actually make an edit on the timeline. Now, if you want to make a more permanent marker that you can keep snapping to or using for setting notes, then you might prefer to actually set a marker with M key or up here on the toolbar. And with no selection, it's gonna add it to that part of the timeline. If you have a clip selected, it's going to add it to that place on the video clip. The difference being that if the marker is on the clip, then it's going to move the clip if you happen to move it to the right or the left. And if you delete the clip, that's also going to be deleting the marker. Now let's go over to the cut tab and we can show how we can basically do the same kind of thing over here. So the cut page, if you don't already know, is just another workflow for editing your videos. It works a little different. Namely, that it has two visible timelines, and when you're doing functions like trimming the edges of a clip, a third timeline may pop up here, depending on the operation. But as far as adding clips to the timeline goes, it's going to be more or less the same kind of deal. So we can double click on a clip that we want to use. We can see what is selected for the in and out here with this gray box. So we haven't made any selections here yet. So we would actually need to set in out points. So I'll just find a random spot. I'll hit I. And now we can see everything that comes before that is now darker gray. Let's go to a further point in the timeline up here. Hit O. And now we have an idea of what is going to be brought into the timeline. So with this middle timeline here, this actually represents the entire video project as it is. So if we wanted to add this to the end, one thing we could do is just to drag this clip down here and position it right over here to the end. And what you'll notice happens is that this middle timeline, since it represents the entire project, just expands in size to match the new clip. So in the cut page, we actually have a couple other tricks for getting our clips onto the timeline. So if you look down here on this little toolbar, we have smart insert and append. So if we want to add a clip that we selected with the in out points to the end, then we can just hit append. So that's going to add the clip to the end of the timeline, which means it just comes after everything else. Roughly close to the edge between one or two clips and we hit smart insert. It's going to try to insert it right after the currently hovered over clip. So one more trick I want to show all of you regarding in out points is how when you are actually exporting your project, you can use in out points to selectively decide what part of your timeline should be in the exported video. So if we go over to the deliver tab here, you can look at the middle bottom and you're going to see this render section. So by default, it's going to render the entire timeline. And that's usually what you would want. You've been working on a video, you want to export the whole thing as one file. But there may be some cases that you actually want to split it up. So if you click on the drop down menu, you'll see that in out range is an option. We don't actually need to manually select it here, though, because as soon as you set in and out points, it's going to automatically change the render mode from entire timeline into in out range. So you can just kind of scroll through your timeline, use the zoom if you need to, to move faster, find the area that you want to export, hit I to set an endpoint. And if you want to out point as well, you can just choose a location, hit O to set the out point for the range. And then you just render it as normal. So over on the left, you can give it a name. So I'll just call this one in out test, add to render queue. I'll go ahead and render it. So now that we have our in out points rendered, you'll notice that the stock clip that shows at the start here is definitely not the same one that's at the start of the timeline. So this smoke thing here that came in right here, but then this was the clip that's actually at the start of the timeline. So if you need to split a video into two or more parts, then that is a great way to do it as well. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much going to be what you need to know about using in out points to be selective when you're choosing clips or choosing how to render them inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So I hope this video helped all of you out there a little bit. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my future video content.